Hi, good morning. My name is Chris Olowich and it is February 23rd, 2021. And this is the first video in a series of how to live uh, that I'm going to do. I'm going to do this unscripted. I wanted that, that home, homey, spontaneous feel to it. But today, I'm going to teach you how to do a six strand hala, which is, in my humble estimation, by far the most beautiful. Uh, I know how to do three strand, which is pretty much standard, what you'll find in any home baking and or bakery. Uh, there's four strand, there's five strand, which is also very pretty. Uh, but today I'm going to do the six strand. There's a reason for the six strand. I learned how to do this many moons ago at Sutton Place Gourmet in Bethesda, Maryland. And the reason that bakers for probably a hundred years, uh, professional bakers, have been doing six stranded hala is because there's a machine uh, at one time it was just a manual press, but then they put an electric motor on it. It's called a divider rounder. You put a slab of dough like this um, on a polycarbonate uh, disc with a handle, and it has 36 uh, um, impressions, which the machine comes down, cuts it, cuts your round dough into 36 balls, and... Uh, rounds them. Uh, I don't have that machine anymore. I'm just working uh, at home. <clears throat> but uh, 36, <coughs> excuse me, 36 divided by 6 gives you uh, 6 O's. Excuse me, I'm going to get a drink of water. I make my uh, a standard hala is 16 ounces, one pound, and I do have a scale which you'll see me use on uh, other breads and bread products. But I have been doing this for so long that I'm just going to uh, do it by eye. So. By the way, I have a bowl of flour here. Here's the proper way. Here's something you probably never see on a YouTube video. People will take a clump of flour and they'll they'll uh, drizzle it down. That's not how you do. You take a pinch of flour and you flick it sideways. As you can see, you pretty much get a very thin, even uh, application, dusting of the flour. So. I have this for cutting. This is what's called a bench knife. It is a knife, it's pretty dull. Although when I had my bakery, uh, I would take my knives every Friday up to the knife shop two blocks away and he would put a razor's edge on it. But I don't need that. So this is a bench knife. This is a pizza cutter. And you just cut a strip, stretch it out a little bit. You want it about that wide. And I'll do one, two, three, four, five. This is not to size, so I'll put another piece on top. That is about right, a little bit more. So, on deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, in any other language you want. So, once you have your six pieces, uh, you want to look at them. This one's a little bit on the lean side. Just take off a little bit. That's probably on the lean side. Feel them. Baking is a very, baking bread anyways, is a very visceral experience. It's all about touching. And yes, uh, germaphobes, we do touch 
the dough. Uh, professional cooks, when they mix, they'll use their hands. Uh, the reason for that is because you wash your hands and then they're clean. Then you take it, here's a piece of eggshell, somehow got in there. You take it, you slap it a little bit, and then I'm rolling. When I roll, I grab a butt at the top, I roll and push it back. I want tension in the dough. And I put it aside. You notice, if you notice, there's a bulge and then it tapers off. You don't want to roll, you can do that, but you don't want to roll it to a needle, sharp as a needle. Take another one, slap, and then I'll slow it down. I do this really, really fast for myself. And then this is number one, this is number two. It goes on top of two and you press a little bit. Here's number three. Again, put it on top. There's a reason for that, you'll find out. And you press lightly. I'll do another video on how to make this dough. This is an absolutely wonderful dough because Here's number four, on top and press. This dough uh, has two eggs per loaf. And if you want, you, have, you then have um, the protein of the eggs. You have the flavor that comes from the, oh, the yolks. And yolks are also, um, a tenderizer. If there are doughs where uh, you want a very tender soft crumb, then you substitute yolks for uh, the whole egg. The protein in the white, albumin, is tough, uh, relatively speaking. Um, it also has, it's neutral on flavor, it has no flavor, but it does, it's still, it's a wonderful protein. But in baking, uh, yolks lend flavor, tenderness, and they're also in, uh, an emulsifier. They will blend oil and water. So here's number six. Again, you put it on the top, give it a light press. Now you have to focus on what you're doing. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six. Uno, dos, tres, quatre, cinco, six. Echad, stein, shalosh, arba, chamesh, shesh. Okay, you pull on this a little bit. Six gets flipped over, goes from the left over to the right. Number two goes over. Now, here's what you have to focus on. You have four pieces that are divided uh, left and right. Then you come down with what was uh, number six. You come down to the middle, you flip over. It's really quite simple. Uh, you come down to the middle, flip over. You come down to the middle, you flip over. You come down to the middle, and you flip over. You gotta watch the length of your pieces. You come down to the middle, you flip over. Come down to the middle, flip over. 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 Down to the middle. And you're gonna end up with this sort of mess at the bottom. Don't worry about it. You are going to sort of bunch them together with this part of your finger. You're going to mash it and tuck it under. And then, so this is what you end up with. You have, a cent you have a central uh, spine, and then you have the braiding on the sides. 
Then you take it with, with your hands like that and you just give it a nice point. You can do it, you can make them blunt too, but traditionally, this is a half sheet pan with a silpette by uh, Del Mar. It's a French company. They invented this as far as I know. Of course, there are cheap Chinese knockoffs, but uh, I want to reward the inventors, so I buy the French. You put them, here's another, here's your pro tip. Uh, the, in the amateur hour, you will see people, they'll take four of these and go, brrr, you know, they'll go all the way across. Uh, baking, uh, good browning on baking. Even, actually, heat penetration needs spacing. So don't crowd your pans. So if I put them at an angle, I could put them like this, but if I put it like this at an angle, it has all of this space here, and you'll see on the second one the result. So I'm going to get that. Feel a little knot. Sometimes you'll get little pebbles where the flour, for whatever reason, didn't mix. Here's another band. By the way, I think I'm going to, while I have this, I have an electronic scale over here, and this weighs, this weighs one pound and a tenth, one and a tenth pounds. Actually, I will, uh, actually, sorry, but I can't. Uh, this is an American scale. I don't have metric. That would be one in the tenth pounds is around 500 grams. So, one, two, three, four. Need, need some more. Just cut off another. By the way, I wish you could feel this. It's like touching a baby's bottom. It's just so soft and squishy and lovable. There's five, and we'll get a, a pile up for a piece. Put this back. Oh, I'm gonna introduce you to uh, every uh, baker slash uh, cook's best friend, which is kitchen film. You have got to get not the little, if you're gonna get serious about baking and cooking, especially baking, you don't ever leave uh, doughs exposed to the air. You can get micro cracking. So I have, I guess I probably should cover the name. I have this, which is the Sirius. Uh, it is 18 inches wide and 2,000 feet. Film wrap, you gotta have the film wrap. If you have ever gone through times of existential angst, where you feel like you're, there's just some, this huge hole in your soul, there's this void in your life it's because you're not using film wrap okay so we pat and we roll while pushing back roll while pushing back then you do there's one go there two by the way, this is nice stretchy dough. The hydration, uh, you do not want, it's not a Kaiser roll, which has, or a bagel, which has a very dry hydration. Uh, nor is it uh, 
on the wet side like a babka dough. Uh, it is in the medium range. Like I said, uh, at some point in time, I will actually show you how to mix this dough. It's no, it's not rocket science. One thing that is very critical, uh, it's a good point to cover. You want to, any dough with eggs in it, with uh, sugar or honey, by the way, this does have uh, honey in it for added flavor, but you can use sugar, sugar's fine. You have to use that uh, sugar or honey because this is a, uh, the salt, for the ratio of salt to liquid, it's a slightly, it's in like a, a scale of one, uh, to a hundred, um, most of my breads for salinity uh, are in the are a fifty, but this one is a fifty-five, and that slight difference uh, in the salt uh, means that that salt, and more importantly, this is pro tip number two. Uh, when you add to a yeasted bread. If you add cinnamon, uh, if you add sugar, or if you add honey especially, uh, any of those elements will kill yeast. And so you have to compensate by doubling the yeast. You have to go heavily yeasted. If you do not go heavy on the yeast, what you will end up with is a stalled fermentation. You'll mix it up perfectly, follow the recipe, everything's beautiful, and the leavening just never takes off. That is because the slightly extra salt, or even if you were to go normal salt, but the sugar uh, especially is uh, fungistatic. It will, it will uh, push back and or kill it wants to kill the the yeast uh honey for sure is fungistatic bacteria static it uh it will kill uh the yeast which is a fungus so anyways i have here one two three four five six eins zwei drei vier fünf sechs un deux trois quatre cinq six Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Echad, stein, shalosh, arba, chamesh, shesh. So, I'm going to pull this and I flip to the left, flip to the right. Then I'm just following the go to the uh, middle. Down to the middle, over. 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 Gotta watch the lengths. Down to the middle, over. Down to the middle, over. Down to the middle, over, down to the middle. Let's make it up, whatever we want. I am pressing on this dough, by this dough, by the way, because of the egg in it. Eggs are proteins, proteins are glue. It will uh, stick to itself. So there is a beautifully shaped hala. Look at that gorgeousness. If you want to, if you want to pause the video and throw yourself on the floor and sob convulsively, go ahead. Especially in these trying COVID times, we need emotional release. That's why God gave us the brains to make challah. And you put it there. Look at that. See, I have this big area, big area, big area. There's going to be a lot of circulation when the baking comes around. Now, I'm going to go over here. 
get the magic film. Get this covered up, which is absolutely essential. I want you to take note of the size that these are because these are going to come up like this. When this is done baking, they will be that big. I have over here on my oven, I have this rack uh, because this surface, even though the burners are on, it's pretty warm. You don't ever want to take yeast uh, over 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, I don't know the Celsius. So it's got an air gap. So I put it here to accelerate. This will double uh, the fermentation time, the secondary fermentation. So I have the oven on 350. Uh, it's a little bit too low. I'm gonna go 360 again. Sorry, uh, there are simple conversion apps as to uh, how you can uh, get that 350 degrees or 360. I'm going to get another pan. One second, please. Now, I'm going to, here. You just get the, there's nothing really, and you flick. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this, speed up this process. One, two, we'll stop actually with the multilingual counting. Uh, here, here, I'm glad this came out. This is a dry, dry point. I'm just going to Take that off, and I'm not gonna throw it away. It can go in either the compost pail, or uh, we have chickens that give us both uh, brown and white eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead, speed this up a little bit. This will give you, maybe help fix this in your mind. There is one. Oh, do not, I'm going like this with my hands. I'm not, and I'm not mashing down. The dough is very soft, very elastic. Essentially, I'll say close to no pressure whatsoever. Again, rolling, I'm rolling, pressing, and pushing back. Roll, press, push back. Roll, press, here's a something. Roll, press, push back. Roll, press, push back. Press, push back, roll. Roll for shape. Okay. We have our six. Pull them forward a little bit. To the left, to the right, down the middle. Over, down the middle. Over, down the middle. By the way, if you see a seam, it doesn't matter. Over, down the middle, 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 make it up as you go. Press, you want to press on both ends with this. Oh, 
Okay, Let's get another. Another piece, and then you know what I think we'll do. We got some extra dough here. I'll show you how to make some nut rolls. You'll love that. Four, uh, a little bit more. Five and six. By the way, another reason for the pizza cutter is it does speed things up. By the way, this is a granite uh, countertop. It does not scratch it um, or leave lines in it. Believe me, I do not want to replace this, but it's fine. It does well. So, one. Isn't that cool? That is cool. The question was rhetorical. There is three. This is very, very relaxing. At holidays, I'll make uh, rolls, holla, holla knot rolls. And uh, as you will see, they, uh, the rhythm, the rhythm that uh, is flowing from your muscle memory, uh, uh, it's just very invigorating to your mind and we need mental invigoration. So one through six, grab six, flip it to the left, grab one, flip it to the right, make that center, middle, over, middle, over, middle, over, middle, over, middle, over, and by the way, I'm pulling, giving a little bit of tension this way towards me. Uh, oh, middle, middle, over, middle, over, middle, over, middle, over, middle, over. Let's make it up as we go along. I'm pressing. Press, it will flatten out, so tuck it under. If you do not, uh, if you have a slightly drier dough and you do not press down on this, your dough, can, your loaf can come uh, undone. Hey, if you are planning on using uh, your hollow in a non-traditional way, as in breaking it apart, and just eating those luscious golden threads um, dipped in your soup or whatever. If you want more of a sandwich loaf, then take it and make it look more like that. But traditionally, you know, I'll roll this. That's like tradition. And as Tevye said in Fiddler on the Roof, without tradition, I would be like a fiddler on the roof, always precariously balanced. So, push this over, get another piece of my glorious film wrap. Remember our earlier pro tip? I'll parse it uh, slightly from a slightly different perspective, which is that if you don't have a big box of film wrap, you are existing. You are not living. 
that emptiness you feel inside is because you don't have film wrap. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. I have these take a half an hour to bake at 350. I will egg wash them and you'll see that uh, in another video. And uh, so I made these two up as you see very close together. Normally I would make up uh, the bread. I would make that up, say those two loaves. I can only bake two loaves in this small home oven at a time. Well, it's a regular oven, but uh, I can only bake two at a time, a half an hour apart. So normally, uh, if I wasn't using that as a proofing box uh, to accelerate the fermentation, the leavening, uh, then I would wait a half an hour in between this, but I don't need to do that. So I'm going to end this video and then I will come back and show you how to make an absolutely uh, delightful uh, roll for a sandwich uh, or you can, uh, they're great for eating with soup. We eat soup, I don't know, three, four times a week. Uh, Europe, Europe is more of a soup eating culture. And if you have a, 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 a nice, nutritious, uh, delicious, which I'll show you how to make in the series, uh, uh, health engendering soup, then uh, all you need is good bread. Unless you're on keto. I don't want to offend the keto set, but we eat bread. So, thank you for uh, stopping in. I hope this was helpful, especially um, to uh, the Jewish people out there from uh, whom this uh, bread and tradition comes. Uh, by the way, it's not chala, it's chala, chala. It's a light fricative. It's the letter het. Um, but you can say chala if you want to. That's the chaf, which in the Hebrew alphabet, which is the heavier, more forceful fricative. Uh, but anyways, uh, the name hala is the shoe bread. Uh, in some translations, it's the bread that was in the temple. It did not look like this. I'm, I have no doubt it was a flat bread. But it comes from uh, the Torah of uh, Moshe. The, uh, the law of Moses, and uh, when a Jewish baker uh, makes uh, challah, uh, he or she, they have to uh, they have to pinch off uh, a piece, and there's a, a bracha, a blessing uh, that they uh, make. Otherwise, it's not kosher. Uh, so, lachalot uh, is to pinch off, to separate, and uh, I think it has to do with uh, separation of uh, Am Yisrael, of the nation of Israel, uh, to be a priest, a special, uh, a special estate unto God, uh, to be a channel for His light. And to destroy darkness. So, anyways, that's Chala. Um, and thank you for watching the video. I hope this was very, very helpful, especially to all you Jewish moms out there who are making uh, your own Chala. Thank you.